presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to use the new uh, updated theme interface in Pro Presenter 711 and how to attach background media for the first time ever to themes. Hi, and welcome to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, why don't you join the other over 10,000 other people who have uh, liked, subscribed, etc. to this channel and to get notifications when I release new tutorials, which I tend to do every Tuesday. So sometimes there's a little feature that Renewed Vision sneaks in to their announcements that they don't make a big deal of that I think are is a huge deal and that's the case with this one so let's head over to the computer and we'll talk about the new theme interface which is nice and then this other feature which they didn't even mention in the announcements so here we are in pro presenter 7 nice and easy and um, we've clearly attached a theme to this you know which is a better way to do it than editing each and every one individually. So let's say that I wanted to select that just to show that there right now, if I do this, we've got a black background. If I wanted one of the new background effects, well, I've already made a theme for that. So I can click up here and I'm going to click on this one, which is called invisible text. It shouldn't be. I should really rename it, which now I can do just by right clicking and selecting rename theme slide, or I can right click here and I can delete the theme. So those are both kind of new helpful things. So we've got that. I can also click here to go into the theme editor. Not going to do that right now. And I'm going to click on this and It'll become apparent here in just a second why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to click on that and notice that this all changed. This little uh, diagonal line indicates that it's got a background fill effect. So when I click on this and then click on one that actually has text on it, you'll notice that, okay, it does have that background fill effect where this is... Um, is desaturated and it's a little bit blurry so that's good but you might be wondering why did I click on that little preview button there so if I go up here to theme and I click on this you will notice that it looks like there's a background there and that's a lighter color than this one well what happens if I click it again this time with this highlighted it's in blue if you're uh, colorblind so with it highlighted and you'll notice that you can see the background then when I click on this notice it applies the background to all of those and unlike before if you tried to do that then it does not re-trigger on each slide so that's a cool little thing that they've done and this is in fact on the media layer because we see the transport controls working so it's uh, basically this one down here so how did I do that well let's go into the editor uh, the theme editor actually and click on that and I'm gonna click here in this gray area and when I do that, which, you know, if this was selected, then notice that this changes. So I'm going to click on gray just to say, no, I'm not dealing with any particular slide here. I'm actually dealing with the whole theme right here. And I don't need this background checkbox checked. Um, right here, I can change what the media is so let me remove that just to show you how it shows up by default it says media action then has a little plus button right here we're going to click on the little plus button 
and navigate to um, one of my backgrounds. So just so it's clear that this is totally different, I'm going to do this Rocky Springs Hillside. I've brought this in several times, so it's going to ask me if I want to bring in another one. Um, apparently it didn't. So um, right here where it says Inspector, I now have the ability that, to change some stuff. I could go f for a loop, soft loop, you know, all that normal stuff that I can do with the background. Uh, I can make it stop if I wanted to, loop for a play count, loop for a time, all that normal stuff that uh, I can do with a background. But now this is attached to this invisible text theme. So, uh, which as I say is the wrong name for this theme now, but it's one that I created a while back and was doing something totally different with. So. If I click on show here and let's um, go back up here to theme and now notice that this has updated. If I apply this, now it puts that across all of those and I'm good to go. And it's got the same desaturated blurry background and everything. So. If I want to apply the background that is saved with the theme here in the theme thing, I make sure that this is selected and it shows that background. If I unselect it, it does not show that background. And so when I click that again, then it wouldn't change whatever background was here. So, you know, if I drag this up here, click on theme here and apply it. Notice that it doesn't change it for these others that already had a background applied to them, but it did change it for the one that um, didn't, or the one that was actually selected. So that's pretty cool. Also notice that when we go back, here at the very top, we have a recents thing. So it's showing me the last three themes that I've used. This is really helpful for if you've used a theme and darn it, you walked away and you forgot what the theme is. Well, now you can just go, okay, which of these three is the one that I have? And by the way, you can mouse over this and slowly move to the right and it will go through all the different uh, theme individual themes within a theme group. So if I click on this one, for example, you'll notice that we have seven of them. So that way, if I'm like, well, it, it is a black box, but oh, it has four lines. So it, it is in here. I just need to click on it and then I can choose the four line one. So I have that as an option as well. Now there are a couple of things to uh, keep in mind. First off, uh, this new interface has changed it down here. So if I am used to adding themes right here, notice now I've got a thumbnail for the themes, not just the name, and then going into the thumbnail. So that can be helpful as well. But you might be wondering, well, what if I have a background attached to this particular theme and instead of using it as a main theme, I use it as a secondary theme attached to looks. So let's click up here to go to edit looks. I could have just as easily gone to screens, edit looks if I wanted to. But um, So now let's do this as an alternate theme right here. So notice it doesn't have the background. So Let's make sure that we still have the background. It's been a minute. So click here and can show this and go here. And yes, there is in fact a background here, but there is not one when you are in the edit looks area. So as of right now, this is the beta, so I don't know if this will change. 
I don't know if 712 will change it or whatever, but as of right now, there it does not apply the background, even though there is a background that is saved with this particular uh, theme. So notice I click on this and it shows the regular background in both places. It doesn't show this background, which is what is actually saved with the theme until you actually get to one that it had been changed on. So that's an important uh, distinction to know. It's something that if you expect it to do one thing and it does the other, you might be surprised. Just keep it in mind. So that is um, just all of the cool new features in the new interface for ProPresenter 7.11's theme uh, way of showing themes. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, so head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number 7, quick, give me your name and email address, and I'll go ahead and make a login for you for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.